Hey everybody, Rosemater here, and welcome to uh, the beginning of the Chiru episodes. It's finally happening. Thank you guys for your patience, uh, for, you know, having to wait this long, and for waiting a while for my theory video, but you guys were, like, so, so positive about my theory video, and you guys were just saying such nice things, so I thank you so much for that. I am quite happy with how it came out. But we're past that now. We're past the theory video. We're past the question arcs. We are now getting into the uncovering episodes. So we are starting episode 5 today. Uh, a lot of people were talking about how episode 5 is like one of their favorite, if not their favorite episode and chapter. So I'm really excited to uh, figure out some more about this. Also, if the screen looks a little weird for some reason... Uh, Ever since I installed the uh, the answer arcs uh, patch, uh, my screen's been a little weird, so I had to put it in window mode and kind of stretch the screen out a little bit because it was being a little wonky, so hopefully it looks okay. But yes, enough of that. You guys have been waiting long enough. Let's get into episode five. I can't wait to see what craziness is going to await us with this one. But let's read this first. Good morning. Please enjoy the new game with its new oh, with its new game master. I say that, but the game has already reached its climax. The culprit has been cornered and merely awaits checkmate. I am sure there will be something you can spot from this clearer perspective. The difficulty is fairly easy. What could possibly fool you now? Well, knowing this game, a lot. <laughs> the end of the Golden Witch. Let's go. Wow, wouldn't have it any other way. Immediately being called an idiot right at the beginning. <laughs> it's funny how, based on, like, on how the tea party ended with her like so defeated and now back to her usual self again. <laughs> All right, so we're going back through the previous chapters here. バトラ。結構面白かったぜ。しかし、<笑> All right, here we are in the Golden Land. Are we picking up right where we left off? That lonely tone was the sound of the desolate wind blowing by. The color of the glittering flower petals on the rose bushes was that of gold. The group of gold butterflies which had once danced through this golden rose garden like fluttering rose petals could no longer be seen anywhere. The master of the Golden Land is the golden witch Beatrice. She could be called inhumane and cruel, arrogant and outrageous, and also naive and simple. That laugh of hers, which lost its grace more and more the longer it continued, could no longer be heard. The golden witch Beatrice sat like a doll resting in a deck chair adorned as beautifully as the golden rose garden. She wasn't relaxing there. Empty-eyed, never responding to any questions, and yet still not permitted to sleep. Beatrice was sitting there as if she were a doll. Her hair was down, and Virgilia was carefully fixing it with a comb. If Beatrice had been complaining about this and, regard uh, this and that regarding her hairstyle, 
Then it would have been clear she was the usual Beato. However, she gave no response and showed no reactions. So this was something that I didn't cover in my theory video um, that people brought up was the thing about who is Beatrice was her also saying, if everybody else on this island is dead, and I say that I am the only one here, and I'm and I'm about to kill you, who am I? How how is that possible? And that's something regrettably I didn't speak about was like how is if Battler's the only one who's left alive on the island, if everyone else seems to be accounted for and dead, how does he end up dying too? So instead, it only looked like Virgilia was combing the golden hair of a large doll. Alongside them, there was a table. On it was a chessboard, along with a mix of black and white pieces in an all-out battle. However, something about this setup looked different from normal chess. It might have been a game similar to chess, but not identical. And on the other side, sitting back in his chair as he contemplated his next move, was a young man. No, perhaps he wasn't thinking of his next move. Every once in a while, he would change the positions of the pieces, reconsidering the situation each time he changed it. Maybe he was reconstructing previous games, trying to discover the thought process behind those moves. In the past, Kinzo, the Ushirimiya family head, once likened studying chess games to taking a journey through the thoughts of the old masters. Ushirimiya Battler was on a journey, a journey in search of the Golden Witch's thought process, which had led her to create these arrangements and make these moves. Badler took a black piece, which he had only just moved forward, and returned it to its original place, sighing deeply. Badler's pieces were white. However, on that chessboard, the side facing Badler was Black's territory. He was stepping through the game from Beato's perspective. <laughs> Even Badler didn't expect that Beato would respond to that statement. No, he was still holding on to the hope that there might be a chance of her responding, and it only made it sound as though he were talking to himself. Oh, she looks so pretty. I mean, she always looks pretty, but... Oh, it's just so creepy seeing her eyes just so dead. Beto's eyes reflected nothing. And her mouth told nothing. After begging him to kill her, the Golden Witch had become a corpse which had given up on living. She wasn't sleeping. She was forbidden to step down from this game, and therefore sleep was not permitted. So she must have heard. However, her words, uh, his words probably hadn't reached her heart. The Golden Witch would no longer sneer at Badler's moves, nor would she praise them or belittle them. This was like that same... This was Badler after all that stuff that happened to him. Uh, which, was it the end of episode 3? When he got caught in the web or something? He just became, like, completely dead. Or, no, that was also, like, when he found out about his mother not being his mother. He just got real dead behind the eyes and just didn't really care about anything. Beatrice was no longer anything more than a living doll. Even so, she would glance at him every once in a while. It would be an empty glance, but a glance nonetheless. Sometimes she would seem to make some sort of gesture, or even move her lips. However, her movements were never able to communicate anything to Badler. It's like she's in some weird, like, coma, where it's like she can understand things, but she can't respond. It seemed unbelievable, but shrill laugh of Beato's would never be heard again. However, even if she couldn't answer, his voice was surely reaching her. Adler was talking to her because he believed this. So he said the same thing one more time.
この子の考えることはわけがわかりませんか Regalia answered and her disciples stead. Up to this point, she had done her best to avoid speaking for Beato. After all, there was a chance that Beato would respond in some way, and Regalia didn't want to be the one to take that opportunity away from her. Which meant that Badler was being forced to bear this with silence, or to bear with the silence, until Beato herself answered. Regalia could no longer bear to watch him like this, and Badler too wanted to have a conversation with Regalia. With faith, their words would reach Beato's heart. Ah, Sapparida, Beato no Tachiba in Nate. Cause the Koma Ugocasa Ugocas Hodoni. Wakarana Knare. The successful execution of a serial murder following an epitaph. He was stepping through the games from the witch side with that as the victory condition. But he just couldn't make it fit with Beato's moves. He could see several incomprehensible moves in the records of their past games that clearly conflicted with that victory condition. <laughs> Now, that was something I touched on in my theory video about why this was supposed to be about the epitaph and then the murders that happened because people weren't solving it, but then there were some weird things that don't coincide with that, which makes me think that whoever Beato is has ulterior motives. But that is something I would like to have clarified. こいつの思考を探る旅路はあまりに険しすぎるぜ。でもあなたは投げ出さないのですね。ああ、約束した。Kill me. Let me die. オレはこいつを安らかに死なせてやると約束した。そしてそれは。Badler is such a gentleman. Even with everything that's happened, he has every right to hate her so much and not give her that. But he's trying. He understands he hurt her, and he's trying. Beto's right ankle was bound with a heavy, cold steel shackle. It wasn't tied to anything, so it didn't restrict her movements. However, it symbolized restriction. It was a visualization of the restriction that prevented her from leaving the game without either victory or loss. And the shackle was probably hurting her. The mercilessly cold steel shackle was tormenting her over and over inside her waking dream. <laughs> so there was never any relief in her empty expression. Her eyelids would sometimes tremble like she was having a bad dream. And every once in a while, she would let out a pain to gasp. Damn, what a cruel existence! Unless I win, Beato will never be released from the curse that prevents her from resting in peace. <laughs> Why should I take part in a game without Beato as an opponent? If that's the only alternative, then stepping through past games on a journey in search of Beato's thought process is a much better use of my time. So the games are going to keep going. Okay, interesting. I was thinking, is this the way that we're going to do this? Are we going to be going through each chapter again and seeing a different side of it? People have told me, and I know, it's not a proper, they're not proper answer arcs. We're not going to get, we're not going to get all the answers. Not, at least not right away.依存だらけよ。ベアとは戦いを放棄して人事不正。ベアとの不戦敗でゲームオーバーでしょ。確かにベアとはいろいろとあったんで、今はちょっぴりノックアウト気味。でも戦う気力を失ったわけじゃない。
これは俺とベアとのゲームだぞお前らどこの誰か知らねえが勝手に話を進めるんじゃねえあんたに意見は求めてないわどうすんのベル受けるの受けない<笑>いいわあんたが引き継ぎなさいなんだとふざけるなお前ら何者か知らねえが俺とベアトを無視して勝手に話を進めるんじゃねえ落ち着きなさいよ確かにプレイヤーが変われば察しても変わるあんたにとっては戸惑うことも多いかもしれないけどそれでも大きなヒントになりうるでしょ So be interesting So if、uh, Beto's not in this how is this gonna go? 知らねえよ Damn, that's, that, that's a face. Oof, that, that's a scary face. It's almost like he's defending Beto's honor. Yeah, that's true. We're changing the whole player. So, does that mean that we're going to have. <laughs> Is that mean we're gonna have a, a main character who's not Badler? Or a new Beto. I don't know. 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 仮に第5のゲームがあるとしてもそれはベアトが出題し俺に挑むものだけで十分だお前らには何の関係もないバドラー couldn't hide his irritation at these two witches called Lomda Delta and Burncastel who had shown up after the game starts and who had started to try and continue it on their own it looked like these witches were of an even higher rank than ベアト So high, in fact, that even Beto's master Verdelia couldn't come close. Badler had the feeling he'd seen these two several times before. However, this was the first time he had learned their names and spoken to them directly. Beto, I'm not going to be able to get the next game. That's why I'm going to be able to get the next game. That's why I'm going to be able to get the next game. That's why I'm going to be able to get the next game. ベルン退屈はごめんなのイライラするほどにお前が退屈がろうが俺たちは知ったことじゃねえまあまあこのパーフェクトなラムダデルタ様に任せなさい私がゲームマスターを引き継ぐ大丈夫よあんまり絶対
When Burncastle mentioned to Angie, Badler's expression changed to instantly. あなたにこの私、奇跡の魔女、ベルンカステルが味方しているからこそ、エンジェには、ひょっとしたら、家族が帰ってくるかもしれない。奇跡の余地が残されてるのよ。あなたが自らそれを捨てて、エンジェの無
すんの後ろにはバトラー運命に屈しちゃう<笑>降りちゃいなさいよ魔女の駒にして遊ばれるなんてもうごめんなんでしょ<笑>ベルンの駒は辛いわよきっとあんたもエンジェみたいに使い捨てにされるわよ<笑>あなたに降りる選択肢は与えてない妹の未来のために戦い続けるの私は味方よその未来にたどり着けるようあなたが勝利するまでサポートするわ私が退屈するまで永遠に<笑>アドラーは彼女を許すことができなかったのです。彼女は彼女を許すことができなかったのです。彼女は彼女を許すことができなかったのです。彼女は彼女を許すことができなかったのです。彼女は彼女を許すことができなかったのです。彼女は彼女を許すことができなかったのです。気にするわよあれれどこ行くのよ Even though Battler had acknowledged this fifth game, he turned his back on them, which surprised Lomta Delta a bit. お前がベアトの代役を務めるってんなら、そこのベルンカステルとかいう魔女が、俺の代役を務めるのも勝手だろ。どうりね、そうじゃないと、不先輩になってしまう。私が作る渾身のエピソード5をあんた無視するってのいや、そうです。little way of getting back at them is just act. If they are using him as amusement, just act as bored about this as possible. Be like, alright, I'm doing it, but I'm not gonna. There's gonna be no emotion for me as much as I can help it. 失礼しちゃう、失礼しちゃう。バトラーはしばらく休憩するそうよ。それまでの間、私がプレイヤーの代役を務める。それでどうバトラー。そうしやがれ。Interesting. なにラムダ。まぬけなバトラじゃなくて、私がプレイヤーだと遊んでくれないの<笑><笑>そんなわけないわ。ベルンと一緒に遊べて嬉しいわよ。そうさ、遊びましょう、遊びましょう。ラムダデルタ様の超ハイパーでキュートに可愛いエピソード5を一緒に遊びましょうよ一応ベアトの作った世界なのよ世界観ぶち壊しにしてないでしょうね大丈夫だってば私そういうのの空気は読める方なのよちゃんとベアトっぽい世界観でもっと She made it a more interesting story. We'll see what that entails. So she said she's gonna have a lot of hints, but there's also, she also said that she's gonna throw in some other things in there to throw me off. So. We'll see which is which. That will be the tough part. Just deciding, like, okay, what is an actual hint and what is a red herring, you know? Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. Without answering, Badler disappeared into the darkness. After shrugging and cackling, The witches immediately started playing with the game board they had stolen from Beato. Ano Majo Domoni, Beato no game are Rikai de Kirinoka. Onaji game ban o tskau ijo, Konoko ni dekinai koto wa dekimasen. Shikashi, Konoko ga yaranai koto wa yaremas. やらないこととは何だチェスの道具はチェスで遊ぶために存在します
それを使ってトランプをすることはできないしかしチェスの駒を相手に投げつけてぶつけたりチェス盤に落書きしてみたりそういう行為をすることも不可能ではありませんしかしそれはチェスに対する冒涜だから誰もやらないだって、ベートの意味は、ベートの意味は、ベートの意味は、ベートの意味は、ベートの意味は、ベートの意味は、ベートの意味は、ベートの意味は、ベートの意味は、ベートの意味は、ベートの意味は、ベートの意味は、ベートの意味は、ベートの意味は、ベートの意味は、ベートの意味は、ベートの意味は、ベートの意味は、ベートの意味は、ベートの意味は、ベートの意味は、ベートの意味は、ベートの意味は、かしこまりましたいかがですかお嬢様の思考を探る旅はさっぱりだが楽しんでるぜしかしよろしいのですかこちらでくつろがれていてもあの魔女どもが勝手に進めてるゲームのことかええ先ほど紅茶をお届けに伺った時は、oh, okay. もう第一の番の殺人が起こりもうじきその次の殺人も起こりそうな気配でした。Damn, they're playing this on like speed running mode. When Beto and I were playing, the game would be paused whenever someone left their seats. However, those witches wouldn't pause that game just because I wasn't around. ロノウェは、ヤツらのゲームを見たのか一部ではございますが。どうだったロノウェ lifted the pot high with an elegant gesture as he poured the black tea. After he was done, he finally spoke, expressing his thoughts in very few words. I am not a man. I am not a m a I don't know how murdering people can have love, but I guess apparently b e t r u c h a did hers with love. <laughs> Without love, it cannot be seen, right? It's like, it's like cooking something. It's like baking a cake and be like, I made this with love, except it's murder. Dancing who ni moshia giru naraba, giring a toran to moshima shoka. I understood what those words meant. When I met Regalia's eyes, she shook her head slightly and stared at the floor. Uabewa, Tai Hen Yoku Ojo Sama no game ni nise teiru to moimas. Shikashi, Kompon ga o kiku kotonat teimas. それはベアとのゲームのルールに反することなのかいいえ、反しません。ラムダ・デルタ様はお嬢様のゲームのルールを実によく理解なされております。しかし。バトラックスティッアップ。ロノウェイ、すまない。せっかく入れてもらったけど紅茶はいらねえぜやはり参られますかああ俺たちのゲームに部外者はいらない Those guys weren't even here in the beginning because I've been loafing about crazier and crazier witches have been introduced and now they've hijacked this game between me and Beto 取り返さねえとなベアとのゲーム版は今は俺が扱ってるはずなんだその俺がここでぼんやりしてるわけにはいかない Yeah, it's interesting that Badler has this weird like he's trying to be honorable I guess all the stuff at the end with the tea party where he understands that she's coming from a place of hurt so it's like he finds like he owes it to her to figure out what what did he do what's his sin why is she doing this It, It's oddly sweet <laughs> ありがとうその言葉をこの子に聞かせてやりたかったきっと聞こえていますねお嬢様はそれにお返事することができないだけですベートは寝ている間に、like a living doll with dull eyes。The game board she had created herself had been hijacked by incomprehensible people and was being turned into a mess。ベートは called on me to be her opponent。Then this game must be something she created for me。I've got to take it back. Matro. 
It's like he's looking at her with love. It's so strange. A weird relationship they have. Of course, Beto didn't respond in any way. That's right. If she can't respond, then I have to protect it in her place. He's even calling her a princess. Maybe Beatrice was right. She is his ideal woman. Blonde, big boobs. He's fallen in love with her. <笑>もしそれを見つけることができたなら<笑> Let's go, and let's take it back. When he faced the jet black heavens and yelled this, the whole world shattered as though it were made of thin glass. Then, as though it had been this way since the beginning, it transformed into that smoking room where Badler had fought Beto so many times, in which the two witches had now hijacked. <laughs> what if that was chapter 5? It'd be like, oh, the game's already done. Okay, on to chapter 6. <laughs> yeah, like you ever even waited for me in the first place. うるせえ。プレイヤーは俺だ。大役の魔女どもは引っ込んでる。別に今から参加しても構わないけど、もう出番ないわよ。確かに。だってもうクライマックスもクライマックス。これで多分ベルンが詰めてゲームセットだもの
more kind to Maria in her deaths. It wouldn't be that violent if Beatrice had anything to do with it. And finally, we have Genji. Okay, so that was in the mansion. Corpse discovered in the servants' quarters on the first floor of the mansion. Neck sliced open by a sharp blade. Okay, so all happening with blades. Uh, Hideyoshi is the only one with the demon stake, though. The only one who was not sliced in the neck, apparently. Everybody else in the neck. Okay, interesting. Uh, which side? Do we have any information here? Okay, the Golden Witch and Endless Witch, Beto's piece, who represents the Witch Illusion, claims the entire incident on Rokunjima was caused by the Witch Illusion. In the fifth game, she clashes with Burncastle, who denies this, because she is no more than a piece, and the higher plane version of her has withdrawn from being the Game Master. She's not in a position to know the truth behind the fifth game. This means she is in a different position than the one she held in previous games. Okay, Burncastle. Participates in the fifth game as the player opposing Beato. However, from the very beginning, her aim has been to deny the witch illusion. Her only goal is to destroy Beato and her world as a way to stave off boredom. Though she does, she does deny the witch illusion, she is no ally of Battler's. Battler, the man designated by Beato as her opponent during the first four games, disgusted at how Lambda Delta took over as game master for the fifth game, he is not taking part in it as a player. Lambda Delta, serving as the fifth game's game master, in place of Beato, who stepped down from the position in the fourth game. Because of that, the story of the fifth game, while appearing very similar to previous games, is expected to turn out quite differently. Just like Burncastel, she has no love for boredom and might be friend or foe to Beato or Burn, depending on the situation. Okay, so everybody else, uh, pretty much the same thing. Alright, let's get out of here. So we got, we got the gist of it, but let's see. Okay, wow, we're going into the second, all right, second day here. This is already starting very differently. So it's like we're just being jumped right in here. It's like, it's like I'm loading a save file from a game I didn't play and just jumped in. Uh, poor Ava lost George and Hideyoshi. Right now, no humans exist on this island except for those in this parlor. And with one exception, it's been shown that none of them committed murder. And the culprit is among these people. So they're really going into the human aspect, which that's what I've been saying. From the beginning, I've, I've wavered here and there about the witch thing, but now I'm like, no, it's a human. It's a human. There's no witches. Oi, oi. となると決定的じゃねえか。魔女が犯人で魔法で殺人を犯したわけでない限り。あんたなの。あんたがジョージを主人を殺したの。どうしてよ。どうして。私は殺していません。in a panic, and with a voice that really couldn't be called flowing, in a manner that was, to put it coldly, unsightly, Aunt Natsui denied the suspicion placed upon her. It's like the game is like, hey, we know that uh, you've had to sit through like the beginning parts of the family conference enough times, so we're gonna throw you right into the like into the thick of it. However, there's no longer any way around it. The girl stood up, brushed back her long hair, pointed at Aunt Natsui, and said it one more time. What? The girl? What? What the fuck? What? Okay, I know people said that new characters were going to be introduced, but what in the world? <laughs> what? So she's like, is she the piece that represents Burncastel? What? What? Okay. Wow. <laughs> this game never fails to surprise me.
<laughs> okay, so are we, we're going to be jumping around, I'm guessing. Just to make things more confusing. Natsui yelled as she knocked loudly and repeatedly. Shortly after, there was a heavy clunking sound. And the sound of the door to Kinzo's study unlocking could be heard. Alright, so now that we know Kinzo's dead, now we can really just look into any... Any scenes with Kinzo, what's really happening? As the door opened, a heavenly, sweet, venomous odor flowed out. Or heavily, not heavenly, ugh, heavenly. Natsui was always ashamed of how she automatically grimaced at that. Even though she thought it rude to the family head, who is dead, Kraus was waiting for her inside the study. So that means that that smell is probably Kinzo's rotting body. It's crazy, like, from the beginning, it just made it seem like, oh, it's all, like, the concoctions and the drinks that he has. But it's like, no, it's prob it's his rotting body this whole time. Not so he flew into his arms. <laughs> oh, boy, is this a flashback to, like, when he first died? Are we gonna get to have some answers about, like, what happened to Kinzo? With an uncertain gait, Natsui went towards the center of the study, supported by Kraus. Okay, so I guess Kumasawa did know, because I did say in my theory video, I wasn't sure if Kumasawa was aware that Kinzo was dead. There, a dignified bed fitting for the head of the Ushurmiya family could be seen, along with Nanjo, Genji, and Kumasawa. So Goto is the only one who was in the dark about this. Nanjo says. After sighing deeply, Nanjo left the side of the bed. On the bed, Kinzo could be seen lying down, sleeping. Alright. So he just died in his sleep? Unless Nanjo's lying, and Nanjo could be lying. Sobbing, Natsui put her head against the chest of the man who had fallen into a sleep from which he would never awaken. Natsu, he couldn't stop her tears over the death of Kinzo, whom she had loved like a second father. Kumasawa rubbed Natsui's back, consoling her. Kraus slumped into his late father's favorite chair. By sitting there, he might have been immersing himself in memories of his departed father. Or perhaps, he thought, by sitting there, he might be able to understand just a bit of the madness of Kinzo's later years, which had eluded him to the end of his father's life. Nanjo turned his back and looked down over the outside world through a crack in the curtains. It was the same thing he'd often done when Kinzo sat in that chair, contemplating a chess move. Wow, Kraus immediately going into that stuff. I guess it makes sense, though. Nanjo understood that as well. This was the death of Ushurmiya Kinzo, a man who had risen like a comet and glittered like a supernova in the post-war world of business. His funeral would probably be of a fantastic scale. And it would also be the ceremony marking Krauss's inheritance of the headship. And then he probably discovered that all that stuff about... Maybe Krau or Kinzo did have a will, the whole thing about the epitaph and everything, and then he was like, Oh, oh no, I, so I'm not guaranteed to be the head? We have to hide Kinzo's death. He would have to arrange everything as the host of the event, carry out funeral diplomacy perfectly, and make it clear the Ushurmiya family would still hold enormous influence in the political and financial spheres. As Nancho watched Kraus, he was vividly reminded of the time when Kinzo had been suddenly selected as the Ushurmiya family head, a time in which Kinzo had been lost and confused. Nancho could remember that well, and for that reason, he was able to understand Kraus's distress and sympathize with it. Natsui's sobs eventually subsided, 
Seeing this, and leaving Kumasawa to care for Natsui as a fellow woman, Genji returned to Kraus. And he lowered his head slightly, as though asking what should be done. Kraus, <laughs> with his hand still over his eyes, didn't respond. Perhaps, even though he had known this day would come, Kraus really couldn't hide his shock at how suddenly it had reached them. Maybe she heard that, or maybe it was a coincidence. As though responding to Genji's words, not so he came over. Her eyes were red from crying so much, but she apparently understood the heavy responsibility that had been imposed on the two of them even better than Kraus did. <laughs> Trying to encourage her husband, who was overcome with shock, Natsui lent him some reassuring words. When Kraus finally lowered the hands that had been covering his face, he looked up at the ceiling with a blank expression and let out a deep, deep sigh. どうかしっかりお父様の残したものを悔い荒らそうと目論む輩が大勢いるのですよ。私たちはお父様の名誉と財産を守るために戦わなければなりません。それが後ろ見分け当主の最初の仕事ですよ。わかってる。わかっていると
Being in charge of a funeral is tiring work. There's no time to shed tears. If Pross were ever to be given time to cry for his dead father, that time would have to be now. Everyone agreed with Kumasawa's words. Even then, Kraus continued to lazily gaze up at the ceiling and didn't respond in any way. Not so he urged the servants to go. Ah. Is he going to say, like, we need to keep this a secret? As they each start to make their way out of the study, Kraus finally spoke. They stopped walking. Hi. Mate. Hi. Hadn't she already stopped walking, just like her husband had asked? But despite that, he'd once again told her to wait. From those slightly weak words, not so he understood, he had probably stopped her because he wanted her to be by his side. Oh. So all of them are in on it. All of them are all about keeping. So Jessica most likely did not know. Didn't have a chance to be said. So they are all like in cahoots. Like we gotta keep this a secret. When Kraus suddenly raised his voice, everyone jumped and turned around. Unable to comprehend what she had done to spark her husband's wrath, Natsui ran up to him. Those unreasonable words felt like a glimpse of how Kinzo used to be. Natsui so couldn't hide a slight surprise at those words, which made it seem as though Kinzo had possessed her husband. Natsui so told the servants to wait for the time being. She ordered them to sit in a sofa a short distance off, approached her husband, and spoke to him in a small voice. Was it really his father's blood, or was he actually being possessed? Krause's disorderly style of speech strongly resembled Kinzo's. As she watched this, Natsui felt with even greater certainty, certainty that Krause was indeed Kinzo's son, and that he was the true successor to the head, more suitable than any other person. Natsui, Kochi. Krauss stood up and headed towards the window, trying to lengthen the distance between himself and the servants waiting on the sofa by even a small amount. Now so he realized he must have something secret he wanted to talk about. Hi, Anata. What is your Oh. <laughs> Would be bad. <laughs> That's one way to put it. But, is it because of all of his issues with uh, him using that money on failing businesses and it's all going to come out? Yep. Oh, not so he had no idea. メロディーランドの時に近藤君を応援したことがあっただろう。あの方とは縁を切れと申し上げたじゃありませんか。私には断ったと言ったはず。どうして男の義理というものがある。断れなかった。Kraus claimed to hold honor as a virtue. However, Natsui knew that he most often used this as an excuse after he couldn't bring himself up to pass a deal. <laughs> 
この島のリゾート計画でかなりの借金をされたのではありませんでしたかああしたさ方々で恩人に世話になったのだそれらを返済するためにも座しているわけにはいかない返済するためには金がいる金を生むためには金がいる金がなければ始まらないこの島の計画だって企画会社がおかしなことにならなければ順調だったのだ都の役人とも連携は取れていた東京都の新しい観光スポットになると知事の太鼓判ももらえていた私の根回しは完璧だったのだたまたま巡り合わせとタイミングが悪かったちょっとした運のすれ違い事故みたいなものだったあれは事故なんかではありません詐欺ですあなたは騙されたのです初めから彼らはこの島のリゾート計画など描けていなかったのです I like that Natsu, even though it seems like she is、uh, very subservient to Kraus. She's also not afraid to let him have it, too. So, no, 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 This is the type of guy who would go to one of those like, timeshare meetings and he would actually buy something. Oh, gross. <laughs> I feel like Natsui should be the head of the family. She seems to have a lot more common sense than he does. ひじかたくんは立派な好青年だ。彼の生き様からは学ぶことも多いぞ。ねえ、ケンジョウは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウスは、クラウ Maybe it's like Crow said、uh, in a previous episode that he's correct about things, about things、uh, you know, potentially being popular. His timing is off, though. あれはあの外国人が国際的な詐欺師だったに過ぎないあの件については私も曽根崎氏も被害者だ彼の先見性は今をもって間違っていない将来必ず世界の大富豪が宇宙旅行をたしなむ時代が訪れる Wow, Kraus is a prophet He, He's just like 30 years or 40 years too late on it <laughs> Or too early, I should say. He's, this guy is very prophetic, actually, about the whole thing about like the, entre, the enterprise of space tourism is going to be monopolized by a single private company. It's absolutely true. ソネザキという男もその一味だったと申し上げているのですあなたはどこまでお人よしなのですか<笑>どうしていつもうさんくさい話も疑いもせずに乗ってしまうのですか訂正しろソネザキ氏は優秀な未来ある男だ、oh, This is awkward for everybody else in the room who just has to pretend that they can't hear this うさんくさくなどない彼の語る夢は未来を先取りしているからこそそれが見えるものには妄想にしか見えんだけど女のお前には未来など見えんええ女の私には未来など見えませんでも現在なら見えます私の目の前で狡猾な庭板の詐欺師たちに丸め込まれ騙されてなお盲信し,している哀れな夫の姿なら見ることができます Damn Natsui I do appreciate the fact that Natsui isn't just the stereotypical like wilting flower uh you know Subservient housewife that she seemed to be when we first met her. Like, she's not afraid to clap back at him. 
けえ言っただれお前には金持ち業も経済も何もわからんおったの仕事に口は出すな妻は家事だけをしてればいいお前は黙っていろおう Got another word, Natsu fell silent, just as Krauss wanted. She was already far beyond anger and sadness, and the emotion that lay on the other side of those was an almost indifferent pity. Krauss had always been frightened of Kinso since the day of his youth, and had come to subconsciously admire the way his father lived. Without realizing it, he had come to believe he could only be recognized as a man in his own right if he surpassed his father. However, Kinso had been a mad genius. The likes of which had never before been seen in the Ushurumiya family's long history. His talent was a gift from heaven, and it definitely wasn't genetic, much less something that could be learned. Natsu instructed the servants not to tell anyone of Kinzo's death, and dismissed everyone for the time being to give the two of them a chance to talk alone. Then she invited Krauss to her bedroom and made him tell her everything about their current financial situation. They were things that Natsui hadn't been told about under the assumption a woman had no business knowing. Natsui had herself made a point of avoiding this area in the past, thinking that it wasn't a wife's place to intrude on such matters, except she clearly needs to because Krauss is like a loose cannon. However, this might have also meant she had been remiss in her duty as a wife to protect her family. The depths of the sin had been made quite clear to Natsui. Krauss was probably tired of trying to defend himself. Perhaps because he had gotten a headache, he hid his face and sank into silence. Natsui noticed the water in the electric kettle was boiling and stood up to refill her cup with black tea. And when she touched the cup of black tea, she noticed for the first time. The sound of the cup and saucer clicking together told her her fingers were shaking. Krauss had built up a large debt to obtain funds for his various projects, and to cover the losses when they failed. Of course, he had put the mansion and property up as collateral. However, doing such a thing above board would have resulted in the mortgage being registered. In other words, there would have to be a record that Krauss had put Kinzo's wealth up as collateral to obtain a loan without anyone's permission. Krauss couldn't afford for Kinzo, Ava, and the others to learn of such a thing. Therefore, He had been putting those assets up as collateral using the worst possible method. Oh shit. I don't need to know much about the stuff to know that's bad. <laughs> What Krauss was saying probably meant he had, in essence, signed away the rights to their assets. If those assets had been used as collateral for a loan, then Krauss would have had some options under the law. He would have had to deal with the bank, which would have absolutely no compassion, but they would have at least been able to work something out within the rules set by society. However, signing away the deed and power of eternity, a、uh, attorney, was a whole different story. In short, even the mansion they were living in was at risk. If the person holding the deed were to decide to ignore his agreement with Krauss and sell the mansion to a third party right this moment, they would have no recourse whatsoever. Far from using their house's collateral for a loan, This was basically the same as selling it to borrow money. つまり、後宮家の政策与奪は金貸し達の手に委ねられていたわけですね。彼らが本能わずかの気まぐれを起こして突然この家を売り払ったら、私たちは今すぐに物物をまとめ出て行かなくてはならないということですね。理屈上は
するとあなたの借金が白日のもととなり他の兄弟たちに咎められることになるわけですかそれだけでは済まない多分刑事訴訟にも及ぶだろう刑事訴訟ど,どうしてですか君は知らない方がいい、oh, boy, とにかく絶対にこのことを誰にも知られてはならぬと<笑>クラウス looked at the floor shamefully shaking his head over and over If it would come to criminal charges, then he must have broken some laws. He had probably been so intent on raising a large sum of money that he hadn't paid any heed to appearances. Kraus had seriously believed that his many projects would definitely succeed and return huge profits. So he had figured even if he broke a few laws, he would be able to pay everything back before too long and pretend that the whole thing had never happened. This might have lessened his resistance towards breaking a couple of laws. And now Kinzo's death, the worst possible thing had occurred. And soon he wouldn't be able to keep it all hidden. What does that do? Don't let him know this. At this point, anything Crow says, I would not believe. Man, that's. Oh, poor Natsu. I didn't realize it was so bad. What does not to send the Toshis to Fudo Sanka to a Mirimir, Joshua Steve? 今それらを統合して巨大ビジネスタワーを建設する計画が進んでいるこれは私のこれまでの投資の中で最も確実で最も大きな成功をしているものだただそれは身をつけるのにまだ時間をかける絶対に確実だが今すぐというわけではないのだその事業の成功は借金を返済するに足りるものですかもちろんだと思うこれまでの借金をすべて帳消しにできるだから信じてくれもう少しだけ時間が欲しいとしかしお父様はもうお亡くなりになってしまいましたもうその時間はないのですよ分かっている分かっているともだからどこかから金を調達して今すぐに借金を返さなくてはならないとにかく金が必要なんだ金が大量に今すぐ <laughs> Kraus roared and clutched his head, writhing about as if in pain. As Natsui watched, several conflicting emotions swirled about in her chest. She felt pity for her husband, but at the same time, she felt he was a fool. And she also felt a mixture of anger and regret towards her own irresponsibility in letting her husband run wild for so long. It should have been clear to him well before today that they were in a very critical situation. And yet, he had irresponsibly waited for this moment to come and was now writhing about. Her husband was so foolish and pitiful. It was easy to feel frustrated with him. However, she was his wife. For a wife to ridicule her husband as a fool would run in conflict with her responsibilities. If he was a fool, then she would have to support him to compensate. However, she didn't have a clue what she was meant to do with this. If there was a massive amount of money like that, with an easy reach like a bunch of gold hidden somewhere on the island, there was no way that Kraus wouldn't have already laid his hands on it. It would also be easy to tell him to be a man and give up on everything, but that would also run in conflict with her responsibilities. She was Ushurumiya Natsui, the woman who had become Kraus's wife and sworn to support him, the new head of the Ushurumiya family for as long as she lived. So, At this point, since he's dead, I can't remember when the epitaph comes into play because the family has said that they've been trying for years to solve it. They are trying for a while to solve it. Like they knew that that was a thing before this final family conference. So if I were Kraus, I would be hiring people. Like I would be trying to hire like people to crack, like. To crack the puzzle, to crack the rail, I would be spending like all my time just dedicated to like, okay, I gotta find this gold. Of course, that's if you believe in it. She had to somehow help her husband in his efforts to raise money. He does know the gold exists because he did have that one gold ingot, but I wonder if that was. This hasn't happened yet when he found that one gold ingot. She understood it logically. But she couldn't suppress the indescribable feeling of dejection that seemed to rise up from the dark depths of her heart. So, yeah, there we go. 
十トンの黄金なら二百億の価値があるあれさえあればそうそうあれさえ見つかれば万事は解決する夏日あれだ魔女の秘文だ I love when the game just answers my question where I'm like, what about the epitaph? Has it happened yet? Yes, it has. Thank you, yes. I mean, I was, Ava solved it pretty quickly, and Rosa solved it too. Like, they basically solved it one right after the other. It's like if you really dedicate all your time to it, eventually you should be able to get it. この島のどこかに隠されてるはずなんだあれさえあればあれさえあれば一体あなたやめてくださいクラウス acting as excited as if he thought up a perfect brilliant plan grasped Natsui's upper arm tightly Natsui couldn't help but be dumbfounded it wasn't just because she'd heard something as fake sounding as the hidden gold brought up Kraus usually disparaged the story of the hidden gold, saying it didn't exist and that it was all fiction his father had created to borrow a lot of money. Natsui was doubly taken aback because of this. あんなの親父が作った気まぐれな謎謎なんだ解けるはずさ解けないはずがないんだそれしかないんだああ夏日本当によかったまだ手は残っていたんだよこんなに身近にこの島に黄金はあるそれさえあれば万事解決なんだ<笑>ナツヒジェシカを呼ぶんだ今すぐここに家族の危機は家族で乗り越えようさあ早く黄金はこの島にあるすぐ身近にあるんだおお、oh. Did she smack him? Oh, Natsui knocked Kraus aside unable to withstand the pain in the arm he was twisting in his excitement Kraus tripped over the edge of the bed and flopped pathetically onto the floor. Maybe falling over and knocked the sense back into him. Kraus tried to tell Natsui to stop, but she just kept walking. Closing the door forcefully, Natsui dashed away. Natsui ran through the corridor. She didn't want anyone to see her like this, but she ran headlong into Genji. <laughs> わたくしは大丈夫です。放っておきなさい。かしこまりました。あ、源氏、お父様の書斎はどうなっていますか？そのままにしております。何条先生は客間におられますが。そうですか。書斎の鍵は持っていますか？はい、ございます。おお、she's <笑> After grabbing the key to the study that Genji was holding out to her, Natsui rushed up the stairs. Then she flew into the study, and finally, she cried out loud. Poor Natsui, that's a lot for her to deal with in one day. お父様。愚かな私たちも。どうか
愚かな私たちをお導きください Clinging to Kenzo as he slept in the bed, Natsui cried even harder. She kept imagining Kenzo sitting up suddenly and patting her head. No, father isn't the type of person to pamper. More likely, he'd yell at me to stop being so noisy. However, neither of these imaginations would come true, because it was an undeniable fact that Kenzo had entered an eternal sleep. But even so, Natsui begged the sleeping Kenzo to forgive and help them. It had only been a few hours since his passing. Perhaps his soul was still here listening to her. Believing this, Natsui begged for Kinzo's forgiveness and help even more earnestly. Now she's just imagining things? <laughs> that voice made Natsui jump up in surprise. They can do all they want in this game, he's dead. She's imagining this. This isn't actually happening. Her mental state is just not the greatest right now. When she faced in the direction of that the voice had come from, she saw Kinzo sitting at the study desk, folding up his reading glasses, because Lambda Delta said herself that she was going to throw a lot of stuff out. So I have to be careful about what I believe to be true. Unless Battler's seeing it, I don't believe it. <laughs> またクラウスと喧嘩をしたのか。嫁をいたわらぬとはクラウスに私の悪いところばかりを受け継ぎよう。Especially if Kinzo says anything nice to her at all, I'm just like, okay, that's definitely not Kinzo. Well, there was that moment、uh, in I can't remember what chapter it was where he was like being actually very nice to her. I should have known right then that it wasn't real. <laughs> I haven't seen Kinzo with Natsui, like actually, so maybe he did have a weird soft spot for her. Maybe he was kind to her. Or kinder than other people. <laughs> Natsui understood. This was just an illusion, one that Natsui created from her desire to speak with Kinzo and her memories of the man he once, as he once was. See? All the stuff about the illusions, things that people want to see. That's the basis of this, I'm pretty sure. Like, not just with Natsui, but all the stuff that we've seen, the fantastical stuff. No, that's not it. She believed that just for now, Kinzo's soul had shown itself to her. She was sure doubting this would cause it to vanish in an instant. Kenzo's succession to the family headship came suddenly. At the time, he was nothing more than a young man from one of the branch families, far separated from the Ushirimiya fa、uh, main family. The main family might have had honor and tradition, but that was of no relevance at all to Kinzo, and he couldn't have cared less. Then, the principal members of the main family were wiped out in the Great Kanto earthquake, along with their businesses. On top of that, there was a complicated antagonism between the members of the family at the time, and the elders were all trying to impose their will on the others in that sinking ship. Because of this, they weren't even able to elect a leader to rebuild the Ushirimiya family. They found common ground by selecting Kinzo. A youth with absolutely no ties to any of the opposing elders to be the head. So the elders hadn't really entrusted Kinzo with the rebuilding of the Ushirimiya family. Kinzo had been nothing more than their puppet, with his arms and legs being pulled in opposite directions. Kinzo 
しかし日に日に戦況が悪化し本土決戦の時が近づいてきていた私は不謹慎にもその日が早くやってくることを願っていた It was said that as Kinzo listened to death's approaching footsteps day in and day out, he started cutting his ties with this world one by one. And then, on that day when he had freed himself from all his attachments to life, reached a state of enlightenment, he had a mystical experience. And he met her. Alright, well, we're getting to whether this backstory is true or not. I'm interested to learn more about Kinzo's past with Beatrice, the Golden Witch, Beatrice. 私は魔女と契約を交わし黄金と狂気の力を与えられたその日を境に古き私は死に狂気の魔力を得た新しき私が誕生したのだ存じておりますそして戦後お父様は天才的辣腕にて後宮家を復興させるのです The now deceased elders who knew Kinzo at the time had whispered to each other that Kinzo must have taken a knock to the head on the battlefield and returned with a different personality. That could very well be what happened. Maybe he did actually meet this woman.、Uh, whether she had a lot of gold, I don't know how she would, but gave him a lot of money. But maybe he did suffer some sort of injury that actually changed his personality. That was how much Kinzo stood out after the war. The war, the traumatic experiences can change people for sure. Whether the story about Kinzo meeting a witch was true or not, there could be no doubt that the extraordinary experience of war had prepared him for death and let him reach a state of enlightenment. Natsui must surely have felt that if Kinzo had decided to describe that resulting mystical experience as a meeting with a witch, it wasn't something she could flatly dispute. So, this is it. Oto Sama was sent so far to the world. Major Beatrice was sent to the world. She 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 was sent to the world. そうだベアトリーチェに出会う以前の私は投手と呼ばれるだけの人形に過ぎ私は黄金の魔女を従えて初めて投手たりえたのだお父様その黄金の魔女は新しき投手である夫クラウスには力を貸してくださらないのでしょうか貸すであろうな。真に当主を継承したならば真に継承するとはどういう意味ですか真の意味で後宮家の当主としての責任と誇りを持てるかどうかということだ夏日お前ならば分かっているはず当主とは血で継承されるものではない魂と信念によって継承されるのだクラウスが我が長男であってもそれがなくては真の闘志とは呼べないそしてそれが心に宿されていたならその人間はたとえクラウスでなくとも立派な新しき闘志である黄金の魔女ベアトリーチェはその真の闘志に力を貸すであろうそうであるなベアトリーチェ Now she's gonna appear Oh boy oh boy It's already happening all of these One thing for her to imagine Kinzo But now she's imagining Beatrice When Kinzo called the witch's name Gold butterfly seethed out of every corner of the room This fantastical scene had an otherworldly beauty to it It was like standing in the midst of a blizzard of golden flower petals being blown around a rose garden of gold. Like, what's up with the. How does everybody see the butterflies? Because, like, she's the only one in the room. It's not like they're being told, like, okay, this is what. By whoever is Beatrice being like, all right, this is what. You need. Like, my theory video said it that I think whoever is behind this is enlisting the help of at least some people. Uh, or, like, bringing them into this game and telling them, like, hey,、uh, I'm gonna give you this story. You need to tell this to other people so that we have, like, we're all on the same page here, so that way it makes it seem like magic is happening. But she's by herself, so I don't understand how she's seeing this. As Natsui stared at the scene in shock, the gold butterflies gathered and formed a human shape.
Then the witch of the portrait the witch of the portrait appeared. <笑>その傲慢を わかるか、夏日。真の王者はあらゆる苦難を恐れぬ。必ず乗り越えられると公言する。その Natsui understood. Through this mystical experience, Kinzo was teaching her the attitude required to overcome hardship, even after his own death. Feeling a warm sensation rise up in her chest, she let the valuable words Kinzo had given her echo through her mind over and over. A true monarch, in other words, the true head of the Ushirmiya family, was not to fear hardship. They had to believe they could overcome any hardship. If they could not believe themselves capable, then there was no reason why they would be. Natsui suddenly felt very ashamed of the way she had come into this room, sobbing and asking Kenzo what to do. Hmm. <laughs> As Bae Tariche laughed unpleasantly, no, that wasn't it. She was testing Natsui to see whether she possessed the mental readiness to be a true monarch. Natsui didn't hesitate anymore. She answered clearly, gazing into Bae Tariche's eyes. その方法をまだ見つけることはできません。しかし、私の夫は新しく後ろ宮家の当主であり、私はそれを支える妻です。ですから、夫に代わり、私が宣言します。聞こう。後ろ宮クラウスと夏日は必ずやこの苦難を
Like, she wants, she wants praise from Kinzo so badly. I very much suspect that he didn't give her any praise when he was alive. Doesn't seem the type. Especially because she couldn't give them a son, right? They had the daughter, and you know Kinzo wanted a son. Which is, like, why Ava was lording that over Natsui. Yeah, this is just Natsui hearing what she wants to hear. ベアトリーチ。私の最後の命令だ。当主でないそなたの命令を。もはや聞く義理はないぞ。ほう。ならば新しき後ろ見分け当主の命令に従え。そなたはすでに当主でなく。ワウ。ナツウィス delusions are literally having Kinzo be like she's the head of the family. わらわは誰に仕えよというのか。お前にそれを委ねる。後ろ見分けの当主を受け継ぐ資格があるかどうか。そして片翼のわしの紋章を背負うにふさわしいかどうか。お前が確かめるのだ。断るぞ。当主でなき男の命令など聞けぬわ。
All of those who had witnessed Kinzo's corpse were once again gathered in the study. Krauss was still very unsettled and clutching at his head. Genji was ex as expressionless as ever. Nanjo and Kumasawa wore bewildered expressions on their faces. But in stark contrast to all of them, Natsui's expression was resolute. I'm guessing that's not the case, though, because uh, they did this for at least a couple of years, right? Because it was like they said at the most recent family conference, they're like, we haven't seen Dad in, like, what, a couple of years? And you keep saying that he he's too sick to see us? <laughs> or am I mistaken about that? Was this, like, the was this family conference the only year where, like, he actually was dead? Here it is. Here's the whole thing about magic. It's like magic is believing that a dead man is alive, and if you believe enough, then it's the case. When Natsui said this, everyone looked up instantly startled because they immediately understood what those words meant. However, Kraus alone didn't get it right away and had to ask. それはどういう意味だね。親父はもう現にそこに繰り返します。お父様は未だにご But oddly enough, Shannon and Cannon aren't here. Hmm. Katayukunuasno <laughs> そ、それでいいのかね、ナツイさん。お父様は確かに今日お亡くなりになったかも知れません。しかし、今この場にいる私たち全員が信じることで、お父様を蘇らせる魔法を使うことができます。I said in my theory video, magic is belief. If you believe it, it becomes the truth. <laughs> oh my goodness. ま、無理ですよ、奥様。そんな Nasty is like, well, then you're going to be finding yourself another job and good luck at your age. <laughs> Not if we burn the body. Of course, she wasn't planning on making Kinzo live forever. The fake life given to Kinzo would only last until Kraus could repay his debts. After that, Kinzo's soul would finally be able to sleep in peace. Nanjo repeated himself the time of death would be discovered during the autopsy, but Natsui said again that this wouldn't be a problem. Okay. After clapping his hands together, Kraus sh uh, stood up, shaking his fists. Oh my gosh. That's not going to look suspicious. <laughs> but then again, Kinzo's a crazy person, so I guess maybe it could be seen as something that could have happened. Rokunjima's a vast, uncultivated forest was the perfect place to stage a disappearance. One day, Kinzo would go out to the forest for a walk and never return. They would search for him without success and then be forced to report his disappearance. 
死体がなくても死亡届けを出せるつまり死亡時期を隠せるということだどうだ南條先生これなら何の問題もないた確かに<笑>そういうことにはなります、ね。Poor Nancho, like being caught up in this. Like he's a doctor. He has certain, like, he's got the oath. What is it? The Hippocratic oath? That he has to uphold this. He's just like, you're asking me to do something that's, like, maybe not illegal, but very immoral. So, t h a t s a good thing. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. That's a g o o どこでどう間違って誰かに知られないとも。熊沢、声が大きいです。お父様はあちらでお休み中なのですよ。起こしてしまわれるつもりですか。If it is or it isn't a corpse, Kinzo is sleeping. As Natsui said that, Kinzo lay quietly on the bed, as though there was nothing at all odd about her words. All right, guys, that will do it for this episode. Sorry, it's a little bit of a shorter one.、Uh, I will try and make next week's episode at least two hours to make up for it. But some interesting things popping up. First of all, that、uh, the girl who just appeared for like two seconds at the beginning,、uh, we're doing the time jumps.、Uh, we are getting like right smack in the middle of the game, or almost the end of the game, and then going all the way back to the beginning at Kenzo's death. So. But as Lambda Delta has told us,、uh, she's going to be throwing in a lot of、uh, you know, clues or half truths or not truths at all to throw us off. So we've got to start thinking right from the beginning like, what if this is true, what isn't? But、uh, yeah, interesting start so far to this.、Um, I, I'm really interested to get into this game that's already like, kicked off quite far in and find out how it led up to all that stuff and all those people dying. So, I hope you guys enjoyed、uh, part one of episode five. And stay tuned next week for、uh, whatever episode that's going to be 52 or part two of episode five. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, bye.